Today we are on uh, Proverbs chapter 29. It's very important to, be to receive teaching that we are able to listen, especially when we are being rebuked. If we are not being teachable, that we are, our neck is stiff. Then we'll be destroyed without remedy. Chapter 29, verse 1 is actually guiding the whole chapter. That's chapter verse 1 to 27. If we are teachable, we will receive life. If we don't receive teaching, we will be destroyed without remedy. Chapter 29, verse 1 is quite negative. It's a bit like uh, the Ten Commandments. Do not, do not. So those... Remained stiff neck after many rebuke. The title for today is Refuse to be, refuse to be, do not remain stiff neck after many rebukes will suddenly be destroyed without remedy. That's just chapter, uh, verse one. With, without remedy. Everything is with remedy, but if we refuse to listen, then there is no remedy. So especially if we are in rebuke, if we are rebuked, we still remain stiff neck. We will be suddenly destroyed without remedy. So he's talking about the Israelites. So when they are rebuked by God, that they remain stiff-necked, then they will be suddenly destroyed without remedy. When the prophets remind them that God is, God is rebuking you, God is disciplining you, He sent all kinds of curses to you. You had plague, you encountered plague, disasters, drought, and mildew. All kinds of plagues appear, uh, come upon you and attack from nations. God rose up the nations to attack you. And Assyria is the rock of anger in the hand of God. God raised up other nations to attack you, to strike you. That's the discipline of God. But you refuse to be disciplined. You still turn to Egypt. You turn to the whole nations. You still go on the way of the world. And then in uh, the book of Proverbs, you will suddenly be destroyed without remedy. That end. That reminds us, in the history of Israel, that's what happened. Even though God still showed us mercy, but they continued to be destroyed and failed. And at the end, So God really disciplined them a hard time. Even though God still showed them grace. But Jesus was telling, uh, cut off his tithes with uh, the Judah, house of Judah. He left Jerusalem. He left all these Pharisees and left Judaism. And he said, I am the true vine. That's what Jesus said. He cut off all ties with the house of Judah. Even though he still gives grace to the people. He has given grace to all people. His grace is for all peoples. Not just when he first came, he went into synagogues preaching only to the Jews. 
So at the end, he went to the all nations, all people. So he now, then later on, he went, the salvation went to the Gentiles. The Gentiles were saved. The number was fulfilled. Then it will go back to the Jews. And then the house of the Jews, the Israel, shall be saved. Yes, God still shows them grace, but it takes a long way. There's a long way to go. And even today, they're still on this journey. Today is also reminding us a great time. Are we like this? Are we like the Israelites? That we remain stiff-necked after many rebukes. Are we like this? Are we such a man? The book of, tell, uh, book of Proverbs tells us the outcome will suddenly be destroyed without remedy. If we look back, uh, we went through social movement. Our society has been struck many times. And then we had to face COVID. And we have been like rebuked and <coughs> reprimanded. It's a heavy blow on us, this COVID. Are we still stiff-necked? We didn't know the lessons we need to learn from all these rebukes. We need to repent. But we still do not repent. We still remain stiff-necked. And then we will be suddenly destroyed. Even though the problems, also the problems of Taiwan, is the same. Now they are facing great army. The situation was tense, is tense. But the government, the president, the people, what's, what's on their mind? Do they still hold on to Egypt or their personal gain, their personal interests? And then they ignore the needs of the nations, whether the nation will survive or not. As long as we are happy, then it's okay. If that's the case, may God have mercy on us. I honestly do not want to see The Chinese, China, Taiwan, Hong Kong will be in war, will be at war, and will be destroyed. And it's without remedy. I don't want to see that. What should we do? We need to be teachable. We need to trust in God and do not trust in wealth and trust in Egypt. Otherwise, we are going on the way of Israel before their nations fell. Yes, even though their nation was destroyed, they, God gave them great grace and then they returned. But at the end, they remained stiff-necked. They continued to rebel against God. That's why God rejected them totally. 400 years, God did not speak to them at all. God talked to them, but then they, they think of their own ways. Then they have this system of rabbi. When rabbi speaks to us, it's just like God speaking to us. And then they think that, okay, we are at peace time. We continue our life. But they didn't know that they were rejected by God. God did not send prophets to them. Until 400 years later, 
Then uh, John the Baptist came. So there is a voice in the wilderness calling them to repentance, and then Christ came. And then they even killed Christ. Man, we are so stiff-necked. Israel is so stiff-necked. Brother and sister, please do not be stiff-necked. In Hong Kong, now we are under discipline of God. That's the overall situation and also your personal situation, your family situation. Are you in the discipline of God? What is the way out for us? We, uh, be teachable. Be teachable. It's so important to be teachable. So that we may receive life. We may live. God will show us grace. That's the whole chapter of chapter 29. That's the main thing, main message. The title is verse 1. A man who remains stiff-necked after many rebukes will suddenly be destroyed without remedy. And it will divide into two paragraphs. Verse 2 to 15 is the first one. Treat people with justice. There's a golden rule. The first golden rule. After this title, do not remain stiff-necked after many rebukes. Under this title, the main title, the first golden rule is to treat others with justice. We need to do justice and righteousness in everything. Verse 2, when the righteous thrive, the people rejoice. When the wicked rule, the people groan. The righteous and the wicked here. Do you want to be the righteous or the wicked? When the righteous thrive, the nations rejoice, the people rejoice full of joy. When the wicked rule, the people groan. Whether you are just ordinary people or you are government officials, whether you are rich, the rich, or you are the poor, we are to be righteous person. When the righteous thrive, the whole nation, the whole society will rejoice. They will be full of joy. If we become the wicked, there is no righteous. In we book, we, we remain stiff-necked. that everyone will be in pain, that everyone will struggle. So one is rejoicing, one is groaning. The righteous people bring us joy, and then the wicked bring us groaning. In the family, in the church, and also in our society. A man who loves wisdom brings joy to his father, but a companion of prostitutes squanders his wealth. Starting from verse 3, there will be some contrast here. So in verse 2, righteous versus uh, wicked. And then in verse 3, a man who loves wisdom versus a companion or companions. Do you love wisdom? That means you walk in righteousness, walk in justice. Or you are a companion of prostitutes and squanders Indulge yourself in your lust. If you indulge in lust, you are not teachable. You are not rude. You are unruly. You are not wise. So one is about wisdom. One is about our lust. 
and then the 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 result is either joy or uh, poverty. By justice, a king gives a country stability, but one who is greedy for bribes tears it down. Verse four. As a king, do you do justice? If you have just, if you do justice, then the nation will be established. But as a person in authority, you want bri- you want brides. You want yourself to be rich, even if it's illegal way, it's unrighteous. You want people to give you brides, and then you give benefits to others by your own power. Then your nation will be destroyed, will be torn down. Verse seven: The righteous care about justice for the poor, but the wicked have no such concern. We need to be the righteous person. Mockers stirred up a city, but wise men turn away anger. And we ca- we read on there a lot of contrast. Verse eight: Mockers and wise men. That's their contrast. And then verse seven: the righteous and the wicked. And then verse nine: if a wise man goes to court with a fool, the fool rages and scoffs, and there is no peace. Talks about the fool and the wise. It's a contrast there. They judge each other: the wise and the fool. Whatever happens, there will be no peace. The attack on each other will not stop. Bloodthirsty men hate a man of integrity and seek to kill the upright. West Ham. Bloodthirsty men hate a man of integrity. Bloodthirsty men versus a man of integrity and seek to kill the upright. A fool gives full vent to his anger, but a wise man keeps himself under control. A fool versus a wise. Verse twelve: If a ruler listens to lies, all his officials become wicked. Verse twelve. So a ruler versus a liar. If a ruler listens to lies. All his officials become wicked. The poor man and the oppressors have this in common. The law gives sight to the eyes of both. Verse thirteen. Up uh, the poor and the oppressor. They meet each other on earth, right? The law gives sight to the eyes of both. I will explain this in uh, detail a bit later. If a king judges the poor with fairness, his throne will always be secure. A king versus the poor. The king must judge the poor with fairness, and his throne will always be secure. Verse fifteen: The rod of corrections imparts wisdom, but a child left to himself disgraces his mother. A child versus his mother, between two generations, the contrast. The next generation shall be teachable, and the last generation should um, uh, correct them. If they, you do not correct your next generation, then the the、uh, parents will be disgraced. Due to the time, I cannot go into each verse in detail. So now I need to read the whole paragraph. There are two kinds of people. The first one is the wicked; the, the other one is the righteous. 
the righteous, the wise, the the parents. The wicked are the mockers, bloodthirsty, foolish. Uh, you know, vents their anger. They are the wicked. They are the evil. They listen to lies, etc. These are oppo uh, you know opposing each other. So here, verse thirteen, verse thirteen is the key here. Verse thirteen, as well as verse fifteen, thirteen and fifteen. 13 to 15 is like they are the conclusion. The poor and the oppressor have this in common. The law gives sight to the eyes of both. Whether you are the poor or the oppressor, you are the wicked, you are the righteous, you are the foolish, you are the wise, you are the poor, you are the rich. Okay, the oppressor basically is one that cheats others. That is like when you meet others, the law gives sight to you. When the law gives you sight, that means the law will give you sight so that you may see what you, you will see what is justice. If you are teachable, you will receive life. And God will give you sight to what is justice. And God will also give you correction, discipline. So during discipline, if you are willing to open your eyes so that the Lord will give you sight, you, are, you have a teachable heart, you are willing to change, then you will receive life. Then you will come out of your deadlock. But if you are unwilling to be teachable, the Lord gives sight to you. Sometimes God will give you sight through correction, but you do not repent, you will be suddenly be destroyed without remedy. You will suddenly be destroyed without remedy. That's your outcome. As parents, you need to discipline your children. It's a parent's duty to discipline your children. And to be teachable is what a child should have then your children will arise. Then you will rejoice. In verse 1 to 15, it talks about joy, glad, peace. The nation will be established. These are the outcomes of righteousness. But first of all, you must be teachable. The conclusion of 15 verse 15 is important. The, what the child grows up, whether it grows up to be a righteous man or a wicked man. Does he vent all his anger or does he hold his peace? Does he cheat others or he prevails over bullies? <laughs> Will he become a wise king or he will listen to flattery? What, what kind of king he will become? What is the key? When he was young, he's willing to listen to the teaching of his parents. And his parents, when your children are young, you are willing to teach them. Just like God disciplined, disciplines Israel. But sadly, we don't want to be rebuked. We don't want to be corrected. But even so, we must correct them. We must discipline them. Do not please your child since they are young. You are flattering them. You are flattering your own child. You please your child you don't want to hurt your relationship. 
You dare not to say what is true. You dare not to tell them the truth. And you even do not want to correct them with the rod. And today in our society, we are not allowed to have this physical discipline, right? But when I was young, when I was in, um, before primary six, every day my mom beat me up. Sometimes I need to wear two uh, trousers. You know, we have this jacket, school jacket. And then my mom would whip me, whip, whip. We want some protection. She beat me every day. It's not really right because she beat without any good reason. Sometimes with good reason, sometimes without good reasons. But it's not right not to beat your children, but it's not right to beat them every day. So you teach when it, it needs, they need to be taught. Even though my mom beats me up so much, she, but I know she loves me to bits. I know that. When I grew up, I realized that, you know, my mom raised me up single-handedly. She has sh her own difficulties. She cannot share, she could not share with me her misery. That's why her emotion was not good. And then she would beat me. I understand her. And I love my mom. And I thank my mom. My mom passed away when she was young, in her 40s. Because she had such a difficult time at her time. So when she was young, she was a, she was a daughter-in-law to someone. She was uh, born in a, fa a rich family, actually. My, my mother's father was rich. But he took opium, he gambled, and he drank, and he lost all his health. And then he sold his children to others. Also, my mom's grandfather was rich. And then that's why my mom's father sold my mom to uh, other people being bullied. And then that's why she escaped. And then um, escaped from the Japanese war. And then that's how she came to know my father. She thought that she'd find a help, but, but my father beat his wife, my mother. Gambling, drinking people. My, my father, you know, would try to come back for a little, little, little bit money left for gambling. My mom refused to give it, so he beat her up. And then she, she raised up uh, me and my uh, big brother, my older brother. I know she loved me. She has taught me a lot. When I stole something, I was, she beat me up a big time. But today, do not give such a harsh physical punishment, but please do discipline, do correct your children. Give them a beating if needs be. I can only finish half of this. I will conclude with two words in the second paragraph. The trust in God. Uh, three words. Verse uh, 16 to 27. What is the key? Verse 25, fear of man will prove to be a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord is kept safe. Many seek an audience with a ruler, but it is from the Lord that man gets justice. Verse 25 and 26, with these two verses is the second golden rule of this chapter. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. We will be kept safe. That's verse 25. It is from the law that man gets justice. 
We trust in God. God decides everything. He rules over all. Do not trust ourselves. Do not trust on our mouth. And do not be afraid of others. We are afraid of others. If you don't break the law, do not be afraid of others. You work in the legal system. You abide by it. The legal, the law is to keep the order of the society. Then you will not be afraid, even if someone knocks on the door in the middle of the night. You trust in God. Do not break the laws. Trust in God. Wherever you go, you can just walk with your head lifted high. May God help us. Only when we trust in the law will we be kept saved. And God. Rules over all. God reigns. He reigns over all. The history of our nation, the Hong Kong situation, the Taiwan situation. We have time to make it right. Between the Taiwan Straits, if we trust in God, there will be peace. God will use the Chinese to go on to the gospel, the mission. Destiny, the mission destiny. The button will be in our hand. I did not. I don't want. I don't want the war breaks out in in China. We want God wants us to do mission, not to do war. May God help us. We trust in God. Amen. That's the end of the message today. Let's all stand and worship our God.
Lord, we honor you. We stand before you today. We are like a pillar standing before you and say that we say amen to everything you say to us. Everything that you say to us, we will say amen. We do need you in our lives. We need your teaching, your correction. We want to see your correction in love. That you have given us your Bible, your guidance in our lives. We give thanks to you. Lord, we thank you. Today you bring all of us to 611. A church of discipleship. Then our people in authority speaks to us, and we thank you. With our heart full of praise, we thank you. You remind us: Are we willing to listen? Are we willing to listen? Are we willing to listen, brothers and sisters? Let's quiet ourselves before God. Maybe as we grow up, maybe our parents have taught us when we were young. Son, daughter, why? When I try to teach you, you give me, you you talk back and you say you don't understand me. And then when we talk to others, people find it hard to talk to us, even in marriage. Maybe when your spouse tries to talk to you, you just say yes, but in your heart, you didn't listen. At this moment, Holy Spirit, may you come to our midst. That you may shine your light in our heart. When I pray, I see a floating sand. People keep dropping into the floating sand, and God tells us, whether we are watching online or we are here on site, brother and sister, some of you are in debt. You use a lot of a uh, credit card. You live on a credit card. You are unable to pay back the. God says, "Repent, repent, repent." You just use whatever I've given you. Do not live on credit card. It's like a quicksand. It will, it will swallow you. It will engulf you, drifting sand, so that you will be end up in debt. If brother and sister, that's you. Then now, open your mouth and repent. Maybe no one knows. But then your debt, your credit card debt, is piling up, growing. Don't think that oh, I can manage. I can manage. Now it's time to repent for your debt. For your debt, repent. I see a um, spider web. You think you are the spider? 
Babe, it's nothing to do with me. There is a lot, a big hole. I'm, I'm like, I'm, I thought that I was like a little bug. I can go fly through this spider web. Do not draw near to that uh, trap, that snare, that web. Especially it's a web of lust. Do not draw close to it. Do not draw close to it. We turn, we turn, we turn. Brothers and sisters, if that's you, repent. Repent before God. Go back. We turn. We turn to the way of trusting God. Do not go any forward because where there is money, where there is lust, we repent. We repent. We repent before God. God shall surely forgive you and help you. Otherwise, you will be destroyed suddenly. Repent. Repent. There will be chance for God to show His grace to you. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for revealing to us. A lot of time we do shopping to release our pressure. Or we satisfy this void, try to fill the void by shopping. But now the word of God says, and then we say to you, we want to repent before you. We say that we are stiff-necked. We are hard-hearted. We are lost, and we think that it's okay. We want to run away from it, but God, you're saying to us today, we are willing, we are willing to repent and come before you. Lord, we come before you and we say that we have a lot of snares in life, but we don't know. We think that we can overcome these snares. Lord, may you forgive us so that we can return and trust in you. We don't want a hard heart. We don't want to be deceived. We don't want to fall into a trap. Lord, may you help us open our eyes, open our eyes, so that we may have a teach and soft and gent tender heart. Lord, may you may your mercy come to us. May you shine your light on our lives. Forgive us because we are unruly. We are self-exalted. We are arrogant. We feel good about ourselves. Forgive us. When we see other people's problem, we can't see our problem. We think that it's your fault. They don't understand me. They don't listen to me. But it's us. Our heart is hard. Our heart is hard. We we are proud. We are unruly. Oh Lord, may you shine your light on us today. Give us a humble heart, so that we can see our own situation. We do not point fingers on others at others, but we need to look at our own lives and see our own problems, and we will seek forgiveness from you, so that we may stand firm again. May you give us a heart of repentance. Give us the repentance grace. We need that grace, Lord. Please help us to repent. The grace to repent, so that our lives can be turned around. We can live a victorious life. May you hear our cries, Lord. We thank you and we praise you. Thank you for your reminder, so that we can have a heart to repent. When the righteous thrive, the people rejoice. When the wicked rule, the people groan. Let's all pray for Hong Kong. Pray for Taiwan. We pray for those who are in authority, in power. Then we take, we come out of the snare of not teachable. So get into two by two. We find a. a A brother or sister, and then together we cry out to God. We want the righteous to thrive. We don't want the wicked to rule.
wrap up. Oh Lord, may you forgive the Taiwanese how they offend you, sin against you in what their words. They worship idols. They take prides, and then they steal. But still, we we think that Taiwan is a good land. It's the best land on earth. We don't see we that we need you. Lord, may you have mercy on us. We repent before you. May you forgive us in the name of Jesus. I declare, you are the law of Taiwan. From the gap, from the people in power to those the people, you are the Lord of our lives. You will intervene, intervene in our lives, and then you can overturn the relationship between Taiwan and China. That Taiwan may arise and go mission and evangelize, and become the blessing to the Chinese. Lord Jesus, we pray for Hong Kong. May you forgive Hong Kong. Most of the time, Hong Kong people fix their eyes on money, on our freedom, on our benefits. We do not cry out to Hong Kong for you. When there is a problem, we want to run away. We just want to. We look for our own interest. Take out, take away the heart of selfishness. Let our heart seek you. What is your heart for Hong Kong? Not about our hearts for Hong Kong. Let all Hong Kong people listen to you. Be teachable, listening ear, and love Hong Kong. You give love to Hong Kong to every Hong Kongers. Let we embrace Hong Kong in love. We stand in Hong Kong and pray. We need your love to love Hong Kong, the love of Hong, the land of Hong Kong. Take away our selfish heart, our fearful heart, that we only plan for ourselves. Let's all stand. Let's all stand. We want to memorize two verses here. Verse one, verse one. Let's all read it twice and then memorize it. A man who remains. Now let's all start. A man who remains stiff-necked after many rebukes will suddenly be destroyed without remedy. Say it again. A man who remains stiff-necked after many rebukes will suddenly be destroyed without remedy. Let's close our eyes. Let's all memorize it. Close our eyes. <laughs> If you can't remember, listen to your neighbor. Hopefully, your neighbor will will be able to. A man who remains stiff-necked after many rebukes will suddenly be destroyed without remedy. Memorize it again. A man who remains stiff-necked after many rebukes will suddenly be destroyed without remedy. Now memorize to your neighbor, okay? <laughs> Find a neighbor and then memorize it to him or her. <laughs> Let's close our eyes. 
Let's go into this truth. In your heart, meditate this verse. That let this verse inscribe on your heart. Reflect. Am I stiff neck? Am I stiff neck? Am I a teachable person? Am I? When I'm corrected, do I know that it's God's discipline on me? Lord, give us a teachable heart so that we will not be destroyed without remedy. Why am I not teachable? What is my problem? What is my problem? Why do I like to flatter others? In the book of Proverbs, it tells us because we are feeling inferior and we are fearful. What is the way out for us? The only way out is to trust in God. That we are willing to be taught. The way out is to trust in God. Trusting God is the way out. May God help us. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I want to um, explain one verse to you. Please remain standing. This verse is hard. Verse 21. If a man pampers his servants from youth, he will bring grief in the end. Oh, no, that, that's, that's not. Uh, we go to New King, uh, NK, NKJV, that's easier. This is... Um, So you are not to pamper your, like, to indulge your, <laughs> you don't say to your helper, oh, yeah, you have done well, even though they have done wrong. Don't, don't they say, don't do that. And then, you know, at the end, they will be so faithful to you, right? Verse 21. Okay, we go to the New King James. He who pampers his servant from childhood will have him as a son in the end. So that um, the NKJ, uh, the NIV is not quite right. Yes, you will have him as a son at the end if you just pamper them, but like indulge him. But what kind of a son? It's a child that you do not discipline. That's verse 15, remember? And that will be and then you will not have peace with such a son. And then you will be so angry. And then you will suffer loss. And you will be disgraced by this son. Verse 15. We need to actually discipline and teach our helper. We correct our son. We also correct our servant. As king, teach your, you need to teach your people. Do you understand? How can we have a life that we are willing to teach others? First of all, we need to be teachable, we ourselves, and take away our fear. Let's all read verse 28. Huh? Huh? Oh, sorry, verse 25 and 6. 
The fear of a man, the fear of man brings a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord shall be saved. Many seeks the ruler's favor, but justice for man comes from the Lord. I'm reading from New King James. New King James. The fear of man brings a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord shall be safe. Many seeks the ruler's favor, but justice for man for man comes from the Lord. Justice for man comes from the Lord. Justice for man doesn't come from the rulers. Many people seek the ruler's favor, but here, who will sit on what position is the Lord, not the king, not the ruler. Do not get it wrong. The fear of man brings a snare. How come we are not willing to discipline others? Because we are afraid of them. We are fearful of men. You dare not to discipline your son, your your servants, your uh, cell leader, cell members. You you fear them because they may be upset because they will leave your cell group because they will like uh, you, your relationship will be ruined. The relationship will be tense. If you do that, at the end you will leave. You will leave. You will lose that person, and then you will be disgraced. You must discipline. First of all, we are teachable, and then we can arise and teach others. We need a teachable heart, and we pass on the teachable heart. Then they will be teachable. While your your children are young, when your servants are still teachable. While your cell members are still teachable, we must teach them. But of course, you cannot beat them with rod, with your servants or your cell cell members. They will sue you, okay? Because you you. But you are you have the authority. If your servant has done some serious mistakes, you must tell them. If you continue to do this, I won't hire you. Yeah, you can. They need to change, and then you need to teach them. You need to take up your authority and teach them. Amen. Let's close our eyes. The fear of man brings a snare. In the name of Jesus, may God take away your fearful heart. You are afraid of your children. As wife, you are afraid of your husband. You are afraid that he will turn, a, he will pull a long face on you. You don't want to ruin the atmosphere. And the end is, you will fall to snare. You don't want your cell members to leave you. You you don't want to upset your cell members. And at the end, you are in a snare. Oh Lord, take away our fearful heart. When we are young, the sense of fear take that away, Lord. Sense of insecurity. Low self-esteem. The emotion caused by fear that stays in our heart. Lord, may you take them away. When we grew up, we are being suppressed. We suppressed. We are in fear. And we we struggle with our emotions. Take them away. Release us. The truth will set us free. Your love fills us, so that we have no fear. Those, whoever trusts in the Lord shall be safe. Give us a heart that trusts in the Lord. Lord, when you discipline us, when you correct us, we trust in you. 
When we face difficulty, we trust in you. When our children, our servants, our cell members do not listen to us, we trust in you. Give us safety because you are our trust. You are our help. Justice for men comes from the Lord. No one decides who should go where. We trust in you, Lord. Whatever position I hold today is up to you, not up to others. We do not decide ourselves. It's not from our, our boss. Put your hand over your heart and repeat after me. Fear of man will prove to be a snare. Whoever trusts in the law will be kept safe. Many seeks um, the faith, ruler's favor. Give us such faith. So that we can follow you closely. So that we become a teachable person. And take up the position and authority you have put me so that I can discipline the people under me. Give me a teachable heart. Give me a, a statue to teach others. May you help me. And may you bless my son, my children, my servants, my cell members. May you bless our society, our, our family in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you all. That's the end of our meeting. We'll see you tomorrow.